Hello everyone. In this module, we learn a simple but nifty concept that helps us connect the idea of equilibrium to multiple forces acting on a single point. The first question to ask under the equilibrium of concurrent forces is what do you mean by concurrent forces? By definition, if all the forces working on a body act at a single point, then these forces are said to be concurrent. So you can see in the image that you have these five forces acting at the same point O and therefore by definition these forces are concurrent. But why do I need the idea of concurrence? To understand this, let me first tell you what I mean by equilibrium. Well, I'm telling you that if you see an object which is under the action of concurrent forces and this object is either at rest or it's in uniform motion, then it means this object is in equilibrium. Let me try to put this in simpler words. Say you have an object under the action of concurrent forces. And if you look at this object, you see that it's at rest and it remains at rest. All it's in motion and it's remaining in motion, which means that this object is under equilibrium even under the action of concurrent forces. Now, what does this tell me? How can I use this idea? I can use this idea by realizing that the necessary condition for the equilibrium of a body under the action of concurrent forces is that the vector sum of all the forces acting on the body must be zero. And this makes complete intuitive sense. Why? Because so many forces are acting on this body and still nothing is happening to the body. It hasn't moved or if it was moving, it hasn't changed its uniform motion. And therefore, whatever these forces are doing, Together they must add up to zero because ultimately it's a null effect. It's having no effect on the body. So if I want to write down a mathematical expression, it's very straightforward. I say, look, it says that the sum of all the forces must be zero. So sum of all forces means sigma f and it must be zero. So I equate it to zero. So this is an expression for the equilibrium of concurrent forces where I have written this down mathematically. That is sigma f is equal to zero. But remember, f is a vector, which means every component direction of f must also follow this rule. And therefore, this actually translates into three different equations, where the sum of all the components in the x direction must also add up to zero, the sum of all the components in the y direction must add up to zero, and similarly, the sum of all the components in the z direction must also add up to zero. So we got three different expressions from one expression of equilibrium of concurrent forces. Now, once we have understood this, let's look at a specific case where I have three concurrent forces acting in equilibrium. And now let me tell you, if I have three concurrent forces acting in equilibrium, it means that I can surely write them as the three sides of a triangle. What does this mean? If at some point you have three forces and you are able to draw a triangle using these three forces, like for example, here I have F1, F2 and F3 and I was able to draw a triangle with these three vectors that is head to tail, head to tail, head to tail. Then I can guarantee that these three forces must be in equilibrium. And of course, these are concurrent, which you can see if you translate them parallelly as we can do with vectors. So if I move these three vectors parallelly, then I can see that these are nothing but concurrent forces. And the fact that I could draw a triangle with them tells me that they must necessarily be under equilibrium. Finally, I also want to relate these angles to these forces. So I want to write down an expression for F1, F2, F3 and alpha, beta and gamma. And we'll do that in just a moment. Before that, remember that these three forces are not only concurrent, but they are adding up to zero. And it's because I can write them as the sides of a triangle. Finally, let me write down the theorem which will connect these angles to these forces and it's called Lamy's theorem. And it's very straightforward. For three concurrent forces in equilibrium, as shown in the figure, what you can do is write down these forces in terms of their angles. And how do you do that? Well, you write down the force in our case, first it's F1, and you divide it by the sine of that angle which is opposite to that force. So if you look at the figure, Opposite F1 is the angle alpha, so I divide F1 by the sine of alpha. I equate this to the force F2 
divided by the sine of the angle which is opposite f2 and you can see beta is opposite f2 and therefore this expression is f2 upon sine beta. Similarly, finally I can write f3 upon gamma because gamma is the angle opposite to f3. So I write f3 upon sine of gamma. And finally, Lamy's theorem says that all these three terms must be equal. The simple way to remember is take the force, divide it by the sine of the angle which is opposite to the force and equate it in the case of three forces under equilibrium. Now let's try to use this theorem in simple cases. Let's look at the first example. The question says that there are three concurrent forces F, 2F and 2F and it tells you that they are in equilibrium which means I am allowed to use Lamy's theorem. But what are they asking? They're asking what can I say about the angles between the forces and they're asking us to comment on what kind of a triangle would be formed by these forces as the sides. It's very straightforward, so let's quickly draw a figure. We have three forces F, 2F and 2F and this is the figure. Now I'm going to use Lamy's theorem straightforward and give you the answer that we need. So from Lamy's theorem, I know that F1 upon sine alpha is equal to F2 upon sine beta is equal to F3 upon sine gamma. But this all is irrelevant. What we have to remember is that it, the force must be divided by the sine of the angle, which is opposite to it. So in our case, the first force is 2F and the angle opposite to that is alpha. So I have 2F upon sine alpha. The next side is 2F again. And then the angle opposite to that is beta. So I have 2F upon sine beta. The final force is the force F and the angle opposite to F is gamma. So I have F upon sine gamma. This is Lamy's theorem. From this, if I cancel all the Fs, I can say that sine alpha is equal to sine beta is equal to 2 sine gamma. And this straightforward tells me that alpha must be equal to beta, at least in the principal interval of theta. So alpha is equal to beta. But I also have to comment on what kind of triangle these three forces are making. So I'll do what I always do. Since they're in equilibrium, I know they'll make a triangle. And to do that, I'll translate them through their directions. So if I translate all the vectors to make a triangle, I can see very clearly that two of them have the same side 2F and 2F, which means I have an isosceles triangle. So since two forces are the same, they form a triangle, which is an isosceles triangle. Now, this was a very simple sum. Now, let's move on to a slightly trickier question. In this question, we are told that a rope is attached in a military field for training. If a military officer is holding onto this rope as shown in the figure, then what will be the weight of this balancing sack if the weight of the officer is given to be 600 Newton? Now, this sounds very complicated. The first question to ask is where is the idea of concurrence? Well, you can see that the forces acting at point A are in concurrence and the forces acting on point B are also in concurrence because they're all acting at a single point. But more importantly, they have asked us the question for such a scenario where the balancing sack must balance the weight of the officer, which means I am looking at a scenario of equilibrium. And therefore, you must get the hint that I must be allowed to use Lamy's theorem. So let's use Lamy's theorem for each of the points separately. Let's look at point A first. When I'm looking at point A, I can see that there are three forces acting at this point. One is the tension acting towards the pole on one side. The other is a tension acting because of this military officer downwards. And the third is the tension acting on the other side. Let's call the first tension T1. The second tension is the one acting on the rope towards the other side. And the last force is the weight of the officer acting downwards, which also creates tension in the string. And I will call this 600 newtons because we are given that the weight of the officer is 600 newtons. So you can see there are three forces acting at the same point. They are concurrent. And since this officer's weight is to be balanced by the sack, it means I'm in equilibrium. And therefore, I can apply Lamy's theorem. Now to apply Lamy's theorem is very straightforward. I simply have to know the angles that are opposite these forces. And to find that, I simply extend this line of T2 and by using the idea that alternate angles have the same value, I get that this angle is also 30 degrees. And then of course, because these angles are supplementary, the other angle must be 150 degrees, right? So now I have the angle for 150 degrees that is opposite 600 Newton. Finally, I also know that this angle must be 90 degrees because the officer is holding to the rope 
downwards, straight downwards and therefore this angle must be 90 degrees, I am ready to apply Lamy's theorem. So now by Lamy's theorem I can write that T1 by sin 90 because 90 is opposite T1 is equal to T2 by sin 120 because 120 is opposite to T2, 30 plus 90 is equal to T3 upon 150 but T3 is nothing but 600 newtons. So I have T1 upon sin 90 is equal to T2 upon sin 120 is equal to 600 upon sin 150 degrees. Now it's simple calculation. What do I want? I want to find out T1 and T2. To do this, I will first find T1 by using the first term and the last term. So I write T1 upon sin 90 is equal to 600 upon sin 150. But sin 150 I write as sin 30 because sin 180 minus theta is nothing but sin theta. From this, I can get the value of T1, which is 1200 Newton. Now I have to find T2, so I will use the second term and the last term. And therefore, I'll write T2 upon sine 120 is equal to 600 upon sine 150. And then is equal to 600 upon sine 30, similarly as before. But this sine 120, I will write down as cos 30 because sine 90 plus theta is equal to cos theta. So sine 90 plus 30 will give me cos 30. From this, I get the value of T2, which is 600 root 3 Newton. I got two things, that is T1 and T2, and I want to preserve this, so I just keep them on the board while I'm doing the sum for the second part. So we have the two values of T1 and T2 that we just found. Let's move on to applying Lamy's theorem to the point B on the other side. Again, I have three forces acting at this point. The first one is the tension from one side of the pole. The other one is the tension from the other side. And the last one is the weight of the sack putting downwards. So I have these three tensions again. One is called T1, the other is called T2, and the sack has some weight which we will call W2. Again, these are concurrent forces and the scenario is equilibrium. So let's apply Lamy's theorem. But wait, what are the angles in this case? Well, we know that that top angle is 45, it's given to us in the figure. And as always, we will try to use the idea of alternate angles. So we extend this line on the other side and this tells me that this angle must be 45. Now, as usual, these are supplementary angles and therefore this angle on the other side must turn out to be 135. And as always, we already know that this must be 90 because the sack's weight is acting directly downwards. I am ready to use Lamy's theorem and I will write that this Lamy's theorem for rope B gives me T2 upon sine 45 is equal to T3 upon sine 90 is equal to W2 upon sine 135. Look again how the force and the angle opposite to the force are in the same term. Now what do I want? Finally I want W2 and what do I have? I have T2. So I am going to use the first term and the last term to get the answer for W2. The first term simply says T2 upon sine 45. The last term says W2 upon sine 135. So now I have to find W2. And instead of T2, I'm going to write 600 root 3 because that's what T2 is. And then I'm going to write sine 45 as 1 by root 2. And I'm going to write sine 135 as cos 45 because sine 90 plus theta is equal to cos 45. So finally, this will give me the answer for W2, which will turn out to be 600 root 3 Newton. So we saw how the idea of equilibrium of concurrent forces can help you solve a seemingly difficult sum in a very simple way by using Lamy's theorem. If you like the video, please subscribe.